from my first my friends D Self over at Germantown High School and Kathy Evans over at Original High School. They'll be showing this in their entrepreneurship classes as well. Um, okay. We're all kind of talking about the same thing at all three high schools. And, you know, and we talked briefly that um, now before we get into what you do, like I said, we did talk. We've been working on looking at mission and vision statements for their own startups, and they've all come up with their own uh, their own business concepts. And some of that we have some nonprofits, we have some retail, we have some online. So um wide ranging uh area of startups we've come up with in this class but the mission and vision statements and the, and the things you do at the beginning are going to apply uh no matter what industry so talk about what all you do and uh, how all that stuff is done okay so you can take it away and if you want to share your screen you can as well okay good afternoon i am latonya Lows. i am goodness First of all, I'm a mother. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm 37 years old. I'm sharing my age because I want to encourage you that you do not have to be, it doesn't matter what age you are to become an entrepreneur. I believe the youngest entrepreneur in the world is, is 15 and he is, is a CEO of his own company. Um, and so I started out, I'm a marketing specialist for United Healthcare. And the reason I'm a marketing specialist for United Healthcare is because until your business is at a level where it can prosper on its own, you have to have some kind of um, support, financial support, especially when you have a family like myself. Yeah, and, and, and I hate to cut you off, but uh, pretty much every speaker we've had with the exception of one so far either started out as an employee, um, employee slash entrepreneur or is currently an employee entrepreneur. And that is very common and it is okay. Yes, exactly. Yes, I struggle with that for a while because I know that you have to have a balance. And I say that because I wish every day, God, I just wish I could just do my business by itself. But, and then of course, like me, I can fit in the corporate world, although I don't like it because I'm so creative, which most, most entrepreneurs are. Um, but until I can get where I should be financially and get gain that support that's needed, you have to use some wisdom and <laughs> do what's best for your family. And so I'm saying that to say in 2014, I began my journey with entrepreneurship. I um, founded a organization called Precious Pearls. Precious Pearls began as a mentorship group for that I started on my own <laughs> um, at the age of, if you do the math, I'm 37, it was 2014, it was long ago. <laughs> um, and I started that because my sister, who is 21 now, she was nine then, she became, I became her guardian. Our parents passed away. Her parents passed away at five and her dad passed away at five and my, and then our mother passed away at nine. I retained custody of her and that's when I found my niche to work with young people and children and realized I had a really big heart to uh, work with young ladies. And so I started Precious Pearls, which was a mentoring group to talk about, you know, as a life coach, as a, a transitional coach for women. And in 2020, I branched off and I began my own LLC, which is called I Am Pearls Global. I Am Pearls Global, uh, I, as, as, with I Am Pearls Global, I'm a health, health and wellness coach. I'm a certified healing and trauma coach. Um, I'm a certified spiritual coach because I became a minister in 2010. And so I incorporate all of that into one business where I actually get paid. So Precious Pearls is my nonprofit. All the funds that we raise with Precious Pearls goes to the nonprofit. I'm Pearls Global is my LLC. I use those funds how I want to use them, <laughs> which I'm sure you all are, are starting to learn about. And then I also have another LLC and it's called the Vision Broker Group. The Vision Broker Group is a group that I've put together to help individuals start daycares. So if you are a non, if you are a nonprofit and you have space and you want a child care, if you're an individual, if you're a church, if you're an organization and you would like to start your child care, I go out and I, and I assist, I look at your facility and I let them know, okay, according to this time frame, this time frame, this is how long it will take to open up your child care. 
the reason I can do that is because for about four years, four to five years, I was a child care inspector for the state of Mississippi. Oh, wow. Yes. I left the state of Mississippi with a plan that I was going to become a consultant. And the reason I did that was because it was so many people that I met that came through those doors that had no idea about what they were doing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I really just always have had a heart for children. So everything I've done is connected. It's all been able to connect for me to, you know, increase my creativity, increase the ideas that I have. So that's yeah. what we I have, do. We have several here, and we got two or three here today, that their uh, concept they started for the class is tutoring, mentor, nonprofit related. So I, I think that's a, a, a field in an area that a lot of our young people want to get into. Exactly. And, you know, as we talk about vision statements, your vision statement, your vision is going to grow. And as your vision grow, your mission will grow. And so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. As you can see, my shirt, the reason I'm wearing this shirt without a, without a coat on, which is not what we're taught as entrepreneurs, <laughs> is to always be professional. But it also depends on what business you're in. Some people are fitness trainers, so they're going to wear fitness gear. But I branded um, my own shirt, which says Evolve Our Exist. And so one of the things that I do um, with Precious Pearls and I'm Pearls Global is that I teach women how, you know, to help them identify what their calling is, what their purpose is, why they feel that they're here. And so evolve, you have to, you know, I feel that you must keep evolving every day, keep evolving in whatever you decide to do. I just simply exist. Um, Okay. Do I need to discuss entrepreneurship? Any? Oh, uh, you can. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the things I want to talk about. My definition and what I kind of gathered just from my studying in the past is that an entrepreneur newer is an individual that has an idea and it intends to execute that idea, usually, and this is the part that I love, um, by disrupting the current market with a new product or service absolutely i love that part <laughs> yeah and, and, it's like, and i'm glad you said that because it's like i tell them mcdonald's didn't invent the hamburger they invented the way it was done ferrari exactly. didn't invent the sports car they changed the way it was done so you don't have to come up with an uh, a, a new invention but just changing the way it's done and changing the way it's delivered changing the way uh the attitude of the market all all those right. things can be things that can be very profitable profitable yeah people. what are people going to remember what are they going to know you for what are, what is it about you that will cause them to only want to come to your whatever you have? I only want to hear your voice. I only want to listen to your advice. I only want to come to your tutoring program. What is it best that you're known for? You don't have to have a gazillion things that you do, but there may be one thing that you're good at. So don't allow people to single you out or don't single yourself out because I know social media is really big right now. You are listening to a thousand things on Facebook, you're listening to a thousand things on Instagram, you're looking at people and what they're doing. Do not compare yourself. Comparison is the enemy to growth extremely because you will try to gain their ideas and add them to yours when that may not be what you're supposed to do. So always stay focused on your vision and your mission so that you can create that product that people really, really need and desire. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I love the part where it says disrupt the current market with a new product or service. Are you a disruptor? Like, I know we, we always hear that you're disrupting the class and you're disrupting. I have a daughter that's seven years old. Oh my gosh. She is full of energy. <laughs> she loves to talk, 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 talk. And at first I would like make her shut up and be quiet because she would be talking so much, but then I start listening. I'm like, she really does have something to say. So most of the time, the things that we are talking about, we really do have something to say. So as entrepreneurs, we have to be able to hear ourselves and put it on paper and exactly. run with the actual idea. Exactly. Run with the idea. You know, it's good to talk about the idea, but can we actually push it forward? You know, are we, do we have the personality and the discipline and the characteristics to work with other people to get things done. And in high school and in college is where you actually learn 
all the skill sets that you need that's going to make you successful in your business. If you're late for class every day and it's your fault, <laughs> you're probably going to be late getting to work, you know. And so a lot of things I did not learn until I started managing my own stuff. And I was like, ooh, I understand now. <laughs> so all of the characteristics, I know your teacher and instructors are always on you, but it's so important. If, if they didn't think you were important, they would just let you come in late whenever you got ready. So that's just the discipline that's needed to run a successful business. Any questions so far? Yeah, well, yeah, we have a few, but let's talk, you talked about mission and vision, and that's their big assignment they have right now. It's coming up okay. with the mission and vision of their business. And what we what we said is that a mission statement will have three parts, and it's pretty simple. Is and you talked about one of them is finding out what's the goal of the business. That's right. How you how you plan to achieve the goal and how this appeals to customers. Because in any business, it can, you, you're like you said, it needs to be something you're good at, something you like. But at the end of the day, every business has to appeal to a customer base or there is no business. That's right. So it's Thank a matter you. of the, the mission statement and the mission of the business has to find a way to do that. So, so what are some ways that, that you tell some of these young entrepreneurs and and uh, some of the people you mentor, uh, ways that is done? I'm an overthinker. So I've learned to just keep things simple, straight to the point and solid. It just works best for me. And for me, I've always said my vision um, is the state of being able, my ability to be able to see and to think and to plan for the future. So for instance, my vision statement for, I'm gonna use one of my vision statements. Um, my, my vision for I Am Pearls is to help women or to help individuals trans, transition from a broken place to a place of healing and wholeness, okay? Awesome. My mission statement though, is actually what I am going to, the drive, the avenue, what am I gonna use to actually get there? So my mission statement is to assist women from an I can't place to I can. So it's encouraging them oh, to help them rediscover oh, who they are. Yeah, I like that. From I can't. Help them I rediscover can't. who they are. That's awesome. Recognizing and identifying hindrances, roadblocks and distractions, creating income and generating wealth, and to overall help them break free from things that will cause them not to fully walk into purpose. That's my mission statement. That's so awesome. I basically broke my vision down into several parts that will create and give me the ability to actually walk out those things I want to see in my business. That's awesome. So um, you have to, first of all, you have to, No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you have, first of all, I always say you cultivate the vision, cultivate your vision first, meaning dig deep and really think about what you want to do first. Once you cultivate your vision, it helps you and equips you to work out your mission, to actually walk that thing out. And so the mission is your roadmap of how you're going to achieve your goals. It sets and defines the purpose of your organization. It sets and defines the purpose of whatever you want to do. Some people have three or four statements. Some people have six, <laughs> six mission. I mean, six individual things on their mission statement. As long as you can actually follow through and, and, and get those things done, you'll be successful. Yeah, and, and one thing we talked about with the mission statements as well is that it's important to have that not only for yourself, but also training any employees, even if they're part-time or volunteers. And also, if somebody looks this up, they need to know exactly what kind of atmosphere they're going to be in That's because, right. you know, if you have a certain target market, how important is that mission statement to show what, what you have to, excuse me, what you have to offer? Right, which, which brings us to values. Every company should have core values. Once you've developed your vision, you move into your mission statement. And from that mission statement, you should have, people should be able to read your mission statement and say, okay, I know what they're about. My values for Precious Pearls, of course, is philanthropy because I wanna be able to give, is to walk in excellence, strength, confidence, intelligence, poise, and beauty. The those are the Oops. Oh, okay. 
Sorry, I, I don't know who uh-huh. it is. Hey, hey, it's fine. It happens all the time. We're out here in the country. Okay. So did you hear about the values? We well, I heard uh, I heard philanthropy and then it went it just started getting choppy. Okay. So of course philanthropy, I use philanthropy because the people that work for my organization are normally givers. We all have the same mindset to give, but to walk in a spirit of excellence, um, to, ex- to uh, exude strength, confidence, intelligence, beauty, and poise. So my global institute, um, the women that are in the workshops that are coming to learn, they all have to maintain a level of poise. They have to be modest. Everyone doesn't believe that and doesn't think that. But if you want to be a part of the organization, that's what we do. So your value, your core values are part of your mission statement. So it's showing not only the type of employee you're looking for, it's showing the type of customer you're looking for as well. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So exactly. And, and that's a big and that's a big part of the, uh, the mission of a company is showing everybody exactly what you're looking for. And, and it raises a standard. It raises, every business has to set a standard because if, if you don't have a standard, you know, People are going to come and work for you. They're going to do what they want to do. You have nothing. You have no guidelines. You have nothing to measure, no pipeline there to cause, you know, for people to respect, in other words. So you have to make sure that you're clear yourself on your mission, your mission statement. That's awesome. I want to give an example, uh, and I I use a very popular vision statement. Um, This is a Facebook vision statement. And... Facebook vision, I mean, I think they're, they're, I can use, I think it's a great example because they seem like they're fulfilling it. And it's to provide access to the world information in one click. No, that's Google. Google's, I'm sorry, Google's mission statement is to provide access to the world's information in one click. Who could, who could disagree with that? <laughs> Their vision statement is exactly what they do. Facebook's vision statement, people use Facebook to stay connected with friends, family, to discover what's going on in the world and to express matters that mean the most to them. That's what their vision statement is. That's what they're doing. I I don't have access to the actual mission statements, but just to give you all a general idea of how to frame your vision and just some good examples of people that are actually doing a good job at it. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we talked about values. I don't have you all gotten into core values? A little bit, and we got a couple of questions about that too here. Okay. Let's go. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Cody Myers. He's a sophomore. And his question is why are core values so important? Wow. Core values are important because we have to have some guidelines on how we live in a standard. I'm sure when you were raised in your home with your parents, there were certain things that you could and could not do. So if the, if she said, if your mom or dad said you could not walk in this house after 12 p.m. or 12 a.m., you couldn't walk in the house at 12 a.m. And then she would explain why, because this is this is something that is dangerous. You know, you don't need to be out after in the in early in the morning in 10th grade. So we all have to have values and standards. They keep us safe, they protect us, and they remind us of who we are. And your your company, there should always be something up to remind those that walk in the door, this is who we are. And also the employees, this is what we stand for. This is who we are. Yeah, it, it protects investments and reputation. It does. Um, this is Corlin Murray. She's a senior. And she's one of those that I've talked about that has a nonprofit type concept since she's started. And she's asking, and this is simple, but it's important. She said, why is a strong mission statement so important? Wow, that's a good question. We have to be sure of where we're going at all times, because if you're not sure, how can other people follow you? How can you lead others if you're unaware of where you want to go and what you want to do? So I don't care if it, it, it took me a very, very long time to actually put my mission down on paper because I'm a scatterbrain and I have so many things that I like to do. But this particular business, I had to focus only on it and I had to stand on it and be firm because it's, it's important. It's, it, it, it describes who you are as a person and what your business stands for. Absolutely. 
this is uh, Christina Robinson, and she's a junior. And she asked, and this, I think this is a perfect for all entrepreneurs. She said, how do you know if the person you are helping is real about their future plans and not just doing it for show? How do you know if the person you're helping is real about, real about their future plans and not just doing it for show? So do you mean the person that you're servicing in your business? Yeah, like if one of your clients, how do you know they're real about their future plans and not just doing it uh, just to say they're doing it? So uh, the uh, the authenticity of their of their uh, intentions. So could you give me a little bit more information, like what type of business? Uh, just is Christina, what type of business do you mean? What is she okay. going to? School? Okay, she's asking like if it was an online if it was an online business. Because uh, because she wants to she's she's interested in the online boutique type thing. Okay. So if it was a uh, if it was somebody with an online business and they wanted to talk to you about their future plans, how would you know it? They had legit intentions. So if I was helping, if I was consulting someone with an online business, yeah. how would I know if they're serious? Mm -hmm. The things that we're talking about today, they're going to have them written down. They're going to have goals set. They're going to have plans set, and they should be able to show me one thing that they've done to get to their next step, a one goal that they've actually accomplished. So you, you, it's, it's very easy when dealing with an individual, when you know, for you to know if they are serious about where they're going and if they're really serious about the direction that they're going in, because that the data will show, the data, it will be there. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Jarvis Owsley. He's a junior. And he also is one of the ones that's looking like a nonprofit type concept. And and you talked a little bit about this. You said you can't compare yourself. But when you look at competition, sometimes, you know, you're not comparing, but you can see what works, what doesn't work. And he's asking a competition type question. He said, what does your competition look like and what can you learn from them? So you do have to under when I say you can't compare yourself. You can't judge yourself based off of where someone else is. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. You have to be, although you have to be able to do a comparison in, and understand your market and know what's working in the market and what's not working. I know what Enterprise is doing versus what Hertz is doing. How are they achieving as many customers are they doing, you know, the way they are? So that's a difference. You, you should be able to look at a competitive analysis and say, okay, let me see what they're doing and glean from that. Glean from that business. Uh, this is Rashawn Smith. He's a ninth grader. And he asked, what is the hardest part about starting your own business? Well, um, your determination, your thoughts. For me, it was moving beyond the thoughts of what it may not be. The hardest thing is to just get started. I'm back again. All right, we got it. The last thing we heard was the hardest part is just to get started. The hardest part is just to, it's actually starting um, and living beyond the thoughts of what if, what if, what if, yeah. the failure of what if I fail, what if it's not good enough. So once you start to give you something a little bit more practical, it's just setting goals and, and following through with them. Being able to ask, ask for what you need um, at your age, a lot of it will be support, the support that you need. Um, the startup cost, although depending on what type of business that you have, startup cost is important. So how you're saving your money now could really affect you. Um, I'm not sure about you all's financial status and family um, structure, but some, some, some individuals don't have a mother and a father at home with them. They don't have that support. So like for my son, he had to save a certain amount of money each month because he wants to be an entrepreneur. He wants a, a car. <laughs> I'm not paying for it. <laughs> so some things I will assist with, but the, for the most part, financial startup is one of the, one of the, one of the most difficult um, challenges in actually starting a business. Yeah, and in our, in our, our online entrepreneur program through EverFi, that was part of the very beginning of it was building a budget to become an entrepreneur. Yes, and I would love to talk about that. It is very important. It is, I recently purchased a home. Um, I had to have the, but your budget is needed for everything that you do in life. 
I mean, just to manage everyday finances, you have to have a budget. It's, I'm not, don't sell yourself short if you're not good at it right now. It is something that is a skill set and takes practice. But Bank Plus has an excellent program um, if you want to build credit so that one day you can obtain a loan for whatever you need. A lot of people discourage loans, but sometimes if you, when you don't have the capital to start your business, that's what's needed. So budgeting is important. At your age, you can start now and in five years, you, you could really be doing well. Yeah, and we have some here that are already working. So uh, even though, I mean, I know the options are limited before you turn 18, but they're still getting yeah. experience and still getting some sort of paycheck. Um, this is Harmony Williams. She's a 10th grader. And she's more, she's a little real interested in the beauty industry. Um, okay. She's asking what pushes you to go forward uh, today based on, or how's it different from when you first started? Okay. When I first started, I was extremely scared. Like I didn't know if the product that I had, I didn't know if I had what it take, took to actually keep going. I didn't know if people would like me. I was unsure. And so back then, I was extremely scared now because of the, and I, I hate to say this, but because of the response and the inspiration that I gather from when I'm helping others, it continues me, it keeps me pushing forward. And I continue to push forward because I see the effect of what my story and how it has been able to help others push forward. I'm in a nonprofit more than I am. I'm in a for-profit business. So a lot of things that I do, I, I give a lot more without being paid for, you know, sometimes because you have to put in a lot of work. So now that it's actually paying off, it helps me to keep going every day. And it's just, once you get in and once you start and once you see um, how many people are really liking your brand, it, it'll really give you some confidence to keep going. So seeing the- e-commerce on the beauty side is very popular right now. It is so easy to start in beauty right now. Yeah, it's easy to there start. So many to profitable, you know, because I, you know, because uh, in you just would you know, if you look at Latrice Rogers and Jackson, I mean, she is just absolutely crushing it, just because she got the idea to have the the bundles in the in the vending machine. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, and I can't. Who would have thought of it? Like, why would I? And then you can't. It's always out of stock because everybody buys out of it. So yeah. You know, and, and she, she makes a she ton didn't of money. The, she didn't invent the bundles, but she invented a, a new way to get for people to get to it. Exactly. Now, so don't sleep. Don't sleep on your ideas. Don't sleep on the things that you think about and dream about. It's really important. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and and I, I just have a couple more. And we thank you so much for coming today. I know you're. I know you're really busy. But um, it's okay. Uh, one thing I always ask. You know, you're a local person. We've had people from all over the country, but you're a local person. You're here in the Jackson area. As somebody that is uh, uh, a black female in Mississippi who's grown up just like everybody else in this room, what can you say to, for them to be uh, as successful as possible when they're going to face the exact same obstacles that you faced growing up? Uh, for me, and this is just, you know, for me, I recognized my gifts and talents very young. And I faced a lot of reject, rejection going up. I started off at private school. I went to private school from first grade to sixth grade. And then I transitioned to public school and I hated it. Um, I played basketball and it really taught me how to stick out, you know, and keep going and to persevere. Um, and then I left private school in 12th grade and then I went to Bell Haven. So then I went, left Bell Haven well, I went to Heinz, which is predominantly black, Juco, junior college, and I played basketball. I left there and then I went to Bell Haven. All of those different experiences taught me something about me and it taught me something about life. So it's important at your age not to box yourself and not to put other people in a box because God will use all of those, and I'm not supposed to talk about religion. <laughs> All of, all of your experiences are truly shaping who you are and you have to be able to look at them from a positive perspective and not a negative perspective. Although the situation and circumstance may have been negative, there is something positive that can come out of it where you can actually be able to help someone else. So for me, I stopped looking at myself as a minority and as a gift a long time ago and to remind myself, you have a calling, you have a purpose, and once you identify it, which is your vision and your mission, you have it. 
Nobody can take that away from you but yourself. That's awesome. Um, and then, and just, uh, and how, uh, and, and, like, and we talked about this a little bit, but again, how much can you emphasize the importance of these, of these uh, service-based non, uh, these, these service-based nonprofits that are doing the mentoring and the tutoring? Because, like I said, we have a couple here that are really interested in that. There, for one, there's so much funding available for nonprofits and public service organizations right now. With COVID, I, I really should have been more prepared last year than I was um, to, for my child care because so many people were starting to want to do child cares from their home and I wasn't equipped, which is why you have to have that. Another reason you got to have your vision statement, your mission statement, because in order to get funding, you have to have a business proposal. And in that business proposal, they're going to need to see your vision statement and your mission statement and your values and goals. Absolutely. So all of that, having all of those things um, put you in position to actually get the funding that you need and for people to look at it and read it and say, they're really serious about it. I want my children to be, you know, become a part of this. So tutoring, tutorials, mentorship is, is needed. People face so much mental health in, in secret right now. And individuals are looking for people like yourselves that have different experiences at your age that, you know, they need to glean from and they need the strength. So it's, it's important. I, I, I rather do nonprofit any day. I mean, I'm just a nonprofit <laughs> person. Uh, it, it, it's definitely a rewarding area. Anybody watching this later too, if, uh, you know, for anybody coming up with, up with that nonprofit, it is, even though it may not be the most lucrative, it might be the most rewarding uh, it is very any business you could run if you're really looking for the business that makes a difference and if you want to uh, and like you said like you're doing you have the nonprofit and you have the for-profit so you can do both exactly. and still make exactly. uh, and you know still find a way to turn a profit but also really find a way to give back which is exactly what we're talking about right now with social entrepreneurship and the importance of it so oh yeah That's your stuff cool. was exactly on point with everything that we're, we have right now in class so you couldn't have been a better person to uh Thank talk you. about and we thank you so much. Uh, we, Absolutely. We're, we're about out of time, but again, we, we thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're really busy, um, and I, I, and thanks for rescheduling for me. I know uh, you had thank a you. hiccup earlier this week, but we made it work. Yes. So yes, it still worked out great for us. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Wish Very you all well. the best. All right, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye bye.